I'm recording this. Yeah, they shot him. Oh, shit. Oh, yo, yo. What the Oh, what the f? What the f? What the f? What the f? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Holy yeah. Yeah. Run, run. Yeah. Yo. Now y'all don't want to put y'all do that. Let's touch it Hello, my name is Julie Snook and welcome to Nine News Watch. Well, that shocking vision has come from New York. The local police chief shared the video and commended his men for running down and eventually arresting the masked 31-year-old. But social media is outraged by the police officers seen punching a woman who had been showing concern for the suspect on the ground. Now, whatever the lead up to the incident, it certainly paints a very disturbing picture of the tension on the ground in New York at the moment as the city struggles with the onslaught of COVID-19. Well, speaking of, let's catch up on the latest in the fight against coronavirus today. In 6,000 Australians have COVID-19. The death toll stands at 51. 260 people are in hospital, 82 in intensive care and 35 are on ventilators. Today marks the lowest daily increase in infection rate for three weeks. A $31 million deal has been signed with an Australian company to provide 2,000 ventilators. The welfare recovery robo-debt scheme has been frozen for six months. Rescue flights from Peru, Argentina and South Africa have been organised for next week. The New South Wales government will provide free preschool for six months. Police have retrieved the black box from the Ruby Princess in an overnight raid. And 800 cars have been turned around at the Queensland border since yesterday. Even residents now need to a pass to cross. And the Queensland government has declared Sydney a hot zone, so anyone returning with a pass will have to quarantine for 14 days. New South Wales police have today visited the eastern suburbs home of embattled Minister Don Harwin. It comes after the Arts Minister was caught at his holiday home on the central coast despite repeated pleas from the government to stay out of regional areas and limit travel. Tiffany Genders reports. This is where Don Harwin has been holed up for the last three weeks in almost one and a half million dollar home nestled in the coastal village of Pearl Beach. The Arts Minister told the Premier a few days ago that he'd been working remotely and came here before coronavirus restrictions were brought in. During his stay though, Gladys Berejiklian and her deputy had been screaming black and blue for Sydney siders to forget travel and stay home. It was only when Don Harwin was caught out by a photographer, he and his boss realised it wasn't a good look. We cannot have a perceived rule for everybody else and a perceived rule for others and certainly uh, I don't stand for that, nobody stands for that and that's why whether or not you're strictly sticking to the rules or not, perception is everything. I'll ask for an explanation and if the explanation doesn't stack up I'll be back Tuesday and let you know we'll be giving him a ticket for $1,000. Mr Harwin has since fled his holiday hideout and returned to Sydney to live in his Elizabeth Bay apartment. Locals including MP Liesl Tesh have made it very clear non local Locals aren't welcome until the threat has eased. All right, on a much lighter and brighter note, the RSPCA in Australia is seeing a huge rise in the number of calls for those looking to adopt a pet during this corona crisis. In New South Wales, 500 animals have found their forever home in the last fortnight. That's a 30% increase. And the phones are ringing non-stop as people turn to animal companionship. It's been so encouraging to see a surge in the public turning towards the RSPCA to adopt and or foster animals from us because of coronavirus. We just want to make sure that we can continue to support those communities and make sure that we get the right animal to the right home. 
All right, there are nine shelters across New South Wales looking after thousands of animals. There's rabbits, birds, ducks, geese and even horses up for adoption. So not just beautiful puppies and kittens as well. So if you are interested, the rules these days is to register online first. And remember, a pet is for life. It is not just there to get you through this COVID-19 crisis. But if you are looking for a companion, the RSPCA is the perfect place to start. Oh gosh, I might go home with a puppy. There's an alarming new daily death toll in the UK as the virus hit British Prime Minister slowly recovers in intensive care. Here is our correspondent Ben Avery. 938 deaths have been recorded in the UK over the last 24 hours. It is a very concerning number and it's certainly right up there with some of the numbers we've seen out of Italy and Spain on their worst days over the last couple of weeks. The overall death toll in the UK now has now passed 7,000 and authorities are saying they're expecting that number will continue to rise significantly for some time. One piece of good news though out of the UK is in regards to the UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson. He does remain in intensive care here at London St Thomas's Hospital but Downing Street has revealed he is starting to make some steady progress. The latest from the hospital is that the Prime Minister remains in intensive care where his condition is improving. I can also tell you that he has been sitting up in bed and engaging positively with the clinical team. Now, even if Boris Johnson does make a full recovery, there are reports it could be weeks, possibly even months, before he can return properly to work. Now, we know in that period there will be some big decisions that need to be made. One of them needs to be made next week when they'll decide whether or not to extend the UK-wide lockdown. At this stage, it is looking almost certain that it will be extended for at least another three weeks. Let's take you back to the US now and our correspondent Alexis Daesh is in New York where, like the UK, the death toll from COVID-19 just keeps rising. The governor at the helm of the epicentre here in New York has delivered terrible news. 779 New Yorkers died at the hands of coronavirus yesterday. That is the highest single day death toll so far. And the governor says that the number of deaths may very likely increase as those who are in hospital right now and have been for extended periods of time pass away. In light of this news, the governor has directed all flags be flown at half mast to honour the lives lost. But we did get some good news today, and that is that New York is now definitely continuing to bend the curve. And for that reason, the governor has said New Yorkers need to keep doing what they're doing. That curve is flattening because we are flattening the curve by what we are doing. If we stop what we are doing, you will see that curve change. That curve is purely a function of what we do day in and day out. Another bit of encouraging news came today with hospitals across the city having the highest capacity they have had throughout this whole pandemic, meaning that they are capable of taking in the highest number of patients thus far. All this good news, though, is prefaced with a caution that if New Yorkers start to relax and go back to normal, then the number of cases will rise. So this advice is something that New Yorkers should be taking, but also other places that are suffering from this pandemic, Australia included. A newlywed couple has ended up behind bars on their wedding day for breaking lockdown restrictions in South Africa. Now, video shows the couple being bundled into the back of a van after police carrying guns and wearing face masks stormed the ceremony as they were taking their vows. The couple had invited 53 guests to their wedding north of Durban. All right, well, Prince William and Kate have made a very special call to kids and teachers at a primary school as their parents work hard for the NHS. What have you been doing? Oh, wow, look at that. Look at your flowers, they're brilliant. I love them, Wow, that's brilliant. Is that a little handbag? No. <laughs> What's that? It's a chicken bag. <laughs> oh, it's an Easter bag, sorry. It looked like a little handbag. Top of the night, these two. 
The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge have thanked the teachers and staff for all their hard work. That is one very memorable phone call for those little kids. Well, thank you so much for joining us on Nine News Watch. We are back again on Monday from 5.30 p.m. We wish you a very happy Easter. Of course, remember to stay home and stay safe. This evening, we're leaving you with a quarantine remix. Justin Timberlake joining an at-home episode of The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, giving a bit of insight into how they've been coping in isolation. Enjoy. I'm home. Are you home? Oh yeah. I'm home. Are you home? What I want to eat. I'm home. What? Are you home? Hi. Hi.